This is Dustin Goes to Hollywood. And I'm an 800-pound gorilla. And you're listening to the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some, some of cinema's most bleak endings. Oh, how's it going, Mally? It's going. <laughs> I mean, how good can it really be after what we just watched? God, yes. Uh, this is our second episode, so uh, thank you if you're still here and you enjoyed our first one. Um, man, we got a lot to say about this one. This one is a fun one. We decided to go a whole <laughs> lot to say. About this we decided one. to go in a completely different direction uh, because our first episode, "Reckon for a Dream," has such a bleak ending that it, you know, we gotta <laughs> go in. And we wanted to go in the opposite direction to get something that's at least a little entertaining. Um, uh, so yeah, that is why we chose to do this one. Uh. So again, if you haven't if you haven't listened to our first episode, please go back and listen to it because it's a great one. Uh, and if you're not familiar with the show, our goal is to try and find a silver lining in uh, in this movie that we're about to talk about. So there might be one, there might not be one. <laughs> we'll find out when still we get there. Still kind of up in the air at this point. Yeah, the jury's still out on that one. Um, but the movie we are talking about is, of course, based based on the title. You know it already. It's Planet of the Apes from 2001, the Tim Burton reimagining. As he calls it. He doesn't want to call it a reboot or a remake. Uh, yeah, that's where directors go when they don't have any clue what they're doing. That's their... <laughs> What's well, a reimagining? Right. So, let's talk about the movie itself. Uh, Planet of the Apes, of course, came out in the year 2001. I already said director Tim Burton. Starring Mark Wahlberg, Tim Roth, Helena Bottom Carter, Michael Clark Duncan, Paul Giamatti, yeah. and Estella Warren. Don't worry if you don't recognize that name. She's unrecognizable. So... Um, Budget of $100 million. How much do you think this made worldwide? It, it didn't make money. There's no <laughs> way it made money. Joke is on you. This movie made $362 worldwide. Bullshit. <laughs> that's, that's a lot. That's, a, that's way more than this movie deserves. It, how? Foreign markets, man. They'll watch anything. I mean, plus you got the name of the apes on there. That's already a franchise. And, you yeah. know, they're cap- capitalizing on it, man. Um, this movie is certified rotten at 45%, which feels a little high. Yeah. A little high. 4.5% maybe. <laughs> Nominated for two BAFTA awards. For what? Well, best costume design and makeup, which... Why? Sh- sure, why not? Nominated. I didn't say it won, but it is nominated. Good. All right. Uh, if you're not familiar with the movie, how, you know, good for you. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and listen to the trailer here, okay? Uh, do we have to? Yeah, we gotta get we gotta listen to it, to the trailer. Here it is. One day they'll tell a story, and some will say it was just a fairy tale about a human who came from the stars and changed our world. Freedom is history. Where am I? What is this place? Get a roach and get him clean! Brutality ah. is law. Rise when your master enters. The powerful rule by fear. Next you'll be telling us these beasts have a soul. <laughs> is there a soul in there? It's disgusting the way we treat humans. How the hell did they get like this? What other way would they be? If they see you on the street, they kill you on sight. You stay here, you're already dead. Which tribe are you from? United States Air Force. I'm going back. Bye. Some humans have escaped. Is there another way out of the city? I can show you the way. They travel with a Declare martial law. We underestimate this human. The hell are they? Your story is spreading through the villages. They all want to see this human who defies the apes. Full division! Full battle ready! It's over. There's no help coming. You came. Sound the call to march! Get me the spaceman. Kill them all. 
So first thing I can say about this trailer, uh, it starts off with female voiceover, but then has the typical, you know, movie trailer in a world voiceover, which is very unsettling. Yeah, that female voiceover is also <laughs> nowhere in the actual movie. <laughs> um, and we talked about this before we started recording, too. It feels like this trailer's got a lot more going for it than the actual movie does. Oh, no. I would watch this fucking trailer. Yeah, the trailer looks great. It was a white knuckle through a red. <laughs> yeah, so very disappointing that the movie didn't live up to it. Uh, do you got anything else you want to talk about before we get into the actual discussion of the movie? Let's just get it over with. All right, let's get into it. So my first note uh, says, directed by Tim Burton. <laughs> that's the first thing that I wrote down. That's, that's a topic. And you know what? We can talk itself. about that from the trailer, too. Uh, the two movies they decided to go with for the marketing was from the director of Batman and Sleepy Hollow. Out of his body of work, that's the two they went for to promote this one. Which... Batman, I understand. I guess maybe they went for more action-oriented stuff that he's done to show you that, oh, this isn't going to be Edward Scissorhands. Yeah... Or Beetlejuice. I would have taken that interpretation. Of I think. I think. Yeah. I guess that's that was their plan. They're like, we got to get people in the seats. Who's gonna buy this action-packed thrill ride? Like, I want to see an ape in like a gothic castle. That sounds awesome. <laughs> um. So, let's start up. The movie starts off. This is my second note. I just wrote down. Uh, Pericles freaking the fuck out. Yeah. The first line of this movie <laughs> is literally. Oh, oh, ah, 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 ah. That was also the worst monkey impression of as all he's, time. As he's freaking the fuck out in this simulation. It, it, in, so... in a space suit. Yeah. It's a monkey <laughs> in a space With suit. With a visor and everything. Oh. You, know what, you know what makes this, this scene great? Is Nothing. That, I guess it's just like one of those rides in like the mall. Like, where you, like the hurricane <laughs> simulators. <laughs> Because, like, he's in this machine, right? And they, I guess just on a projected screen, he's, like, having this whole simulation. And the best part is Mark Wahlberg just steps in from out of frame. <laughs> yeah. He just appears out of I was nowhere. Like, what is happening? <laughs> and just pops the visor up. It's almost like he's going to step in and he's going to just break the fourth wall and be like, hi, I'm Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought it was a PSA before the movie was about he's to like start. He's like the little. He's. You remember Jurassic Park, the video they watch? Yeah, the Mr. He's DNA He's like thing. the little... He's the DNA guy. He's Mr. DNA. He just <laughs> is, pops up to be like, hey guys. Mm-hmm. I thought it was like a PETA like PSA before the movie actually started. <laughs> that would have been great. Um, Probably would have been more gripping. Right. So, I don't know what the fuck happens, but somehow Mark Wahlberg's got to go and... The, the monkey flies into a fucking... Space cloud. Space cloud. That's, that's actually my third note. Time traveling space cloud. Uh, <laughs> I, I like that just that those four combinations of words just are so time, great to me time traveling, traveling space, space cloud. cloud sounds like a great indie prog rock band <laughs> <laughs> it's like the smith's next album or something uh, oh. <coughs> um I, I didn't mean it was bad i like i just said i like the combination of words it's a time traveling space cloud <laughs> it's, it's like, also purple which is I have nothing against purple but it, for some reason, that pissed me off. <laughs> it's Galactus from, you know, Silver Surfer. Duh, <laughs> dude. Is there a silver lining in that movie? No. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, Mark Wahlberg goes to the space cloud. He's going after Pericles, right? Yeah, the monkey. How did the monkey get in the space? I, mi- I must have missed that because I toned out. They, they fucking let the monkey I just tuned out go. Immediately. He flies into a space cloud and Mark Wahlberg's all like, I'm going no to chimp get, left I'm, behind? I'm going to, yeah, basically. I think his exact marine. line is, I'm going to get my chimp. <laughs> and then he, like, hijacks a little pod mm-hmm. thing and flies into the space cloud himself after his monkey. Right. So anyways, Mark... Great <laughs> writing, by the way. Mark Wahlberg goes to the space cloud and crashes on this planet. All right, here's the thing. He gets out of his ship because it crashes in the swamp, and he starts... I guess walking through the the jungle and he spots other humans, right? And they're all on the run, getting tackled by these apes and like captured. Not just not just humans. He encounters poor man's Jeff Bridges. Oh, of course, Christoph Chris uh, Chris Christopherson. Yes, poor yeah, man Jeff Jeff Bridges light. Yes, <laughs> diet Jeff Bridges. Um, here's the thing. 
Okay, you crash on this planet, right? First thing you see are other humans, and you're able to breathe. That should be the first big, like, oh, I'm on Earth. You would think you're on Earth, right? I mean... I mean, there's there's fauna. You're able to breathe the atmosphere. You're I don't seeing know, other man. humans. We don't know this. They didn't establish this world very well. Like where they are in space? Yeah, there's space clouds. <laughs> we Wait, don't when, know what these you, people know. When you just think, like, oh, okay, I'm able to breathe. Like, that. I mean, it... it I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I would have been like, and also Mark Wahlberg's playing this very calmly. I would be other freaking people. the hell out. Not once does he say, "What is going on here?" I'm no, on a, I'm on a planet of apes. He, we'll get into this more, but he sees some outrageous things, and he's like, "Oh yeah, okay." All right. So one of the notes I wrote down here, maybe this is out of context, but I wrote down uh, right before this whole. He meets Chris, Chris Christopherson, and he says, I said, uh, th- this feels like The Martian without the interesting parts. Yeah. it's <laughs> And I, I, that's coming from somebody who did genuinely did not like The Martian. More fur. I would rather watch The Martian. Action. I feel like there's more action in The Martian than this movie. <laughs> um, so Somehow, that's right. I don't yeah, know. I googled this, because I don't... I feel like it's wrong, and I'm, I think... I didn't really get a... Def, a definitive answer, but I'm just gonna go ahead. Has never lied. I'm gonna go ahead and say I'm right. Apes cannot do super jumps, right? Uh, you obviously weren't watching the movie. <laughs> That's a good point. Because, yeah, <laughs> it's like not even like a believable leap. It's they're like twelve feet in the air making these jumps. It's ridiculous. Oh, okay. and, in I, that same scene, it's not even the super ape jumping that gets me oh so yeah some yeah, yeah. apes so he comes across poor man jeff bridges along with some other humans mm-hmm. they're being chased by apes in armor and on horses the apes catch up to them they super jump onto them and they're like meeting them in the back and stuff one of them swings down grabs this little girl <laughs> and just straight up like kobe's her from easily <laughs> Way past the three-point line. <laughs> into a burlap sack. Right. Nothing but net on that one. <laughs> you were almost expecting to hear, like, the like the goal sound. The burn. Yeah. <laughs> if this movie just, for no reason, just turned into apes playing basketball, I would have been so Better much movie. more into this. Better movie. Um... So yeah, and I thought what I thought you were gonna say was about the super ape jump was, you know, they exit the jungle and they're on this cliff top or whatever, and this ape just kind of like super jumps Mark Wahlberg in his back, like or was it was it Mark Wahlberg? Or was it just oh no, it's Mark, it's Mark Wahlberg. And he it's, falls it's over. Mark. And then it's the our just, it's our lead character. And then the ape just takes off in the opposite direction. Doesn't care. Like, he literally like. <laughs> okay, so every other instance they're like super jumping onto these people and just. Beating them profusely, mm-hmm. as you know, apes do apparently. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to Mark Wahlberg, the ape literally jumps on him, knocks him down, looks at him, and then please. turns around. <laughs> it's not like a quick cut. Yeah, you see the it's ape all l- one wide. Knee- like land on him, get up, look at him, turn around, and just walk away. <laughs> like he doesn't. Like I don't need it. It's like, man, I've hit a lot of things already. I'm good <laughs> on this one. Uh, of course, this is where we get the cringeworthy uh, nod to the, the the original film from Michael Clark Duncan. The yeah. get your damn uh, get your hands off me, you damn dirty human. Doesn't play as well as as they, the they did it, guys. They, they did, did it. Yeah, that's they that's where that was the last. That was obviously the last shot of the day. And they they wrapped at the end of the day full full round of applause from the cast. And I crew. feel like Michael Clark Duncan improved that. You think so? At like like it was it was the last he was like, shot. He was like it was the last shot of the it was day. The shot. He thought it was gonna be funny. He was like Tim Tim. Guess what? I'm, I guess I got he's this like, line. Tim Tim. I'm gonna do it on the next one. And he's Tim, like he's I'm like gonna do Michael, it. Michael don't do it. Don't do it. He's like nah. It's gonna be really funny. <laughs> I also should really not be making. Fun of no, Duncan. R- R.I.P.E.D. Anyway, let's just move on. <clears throat> yeah, so here's a question I have. Uh, I just wrote down horses. So we're not on Earth 
Uh, this ain't the original. This ain't your mama's Planet of the Apes. We're not on. We're not on Earth. Uh, where do these horses come from? These are the only other creatures besides apes and humans we see. I have no. I don't. That's all. That's good enough for me. Moving on. Okay, so Mark Wahlberg and these people, including poor man Jeff Bridges, are loaded into this slave cart. He has a name, Dustin. Yeah, it's Whistler. Oh, okay. Is it really? Is that what he's credited as? Oh, you don't know. I was making a blade joke. Oh, <laughs> right over there. Not land um, all the way. I was hoping. Yeah, would. sorry. No, that went way off. Want to do it again? So he puts poor man Jeff Bridges in the slave. He cart. has a name, Dustin. Oh, what's his name? It's Whistler. Ah, oh, nice <laughs> blade <laughs> reference. All right. Uh, poor man Jeff Bridges and Mark Mark are in this slave cart. By the way, did you notice this cameo in this uh, slave cart? Did you notice one of the women? Yeah, I totally did. Mainly because I'm looking, looking at right the at the notes. notes right, but, Linda Harrison. Uh, for the listeners, they probably didn't catch it. <laughs> Linda Harrison, of course, she uh, is in the slave cart with Marky Mark. She has a line, but it's very forgettable. Who cares? Uh, and of course, she's the female lead from the original Planet of the Apes. See, when you were watching this, when you said that, I thought at first you said Linda Hamilton. Ooh, and I that was been like great. Sarah Connors in this movie. That would have been great, great prequel then. And then you. <laughs> and then I realized you did not say Linda Hamilton, and then I was back out of the movie again. Yeah, this movie takes place in between T1 and T2. This is why she goes into the insane asylum. She's like, the apes. If I lived through this, yeah, I would <laughs> completely understand. Um, so, we're going through this ape city, and we see uh, hookah smoking, I think. Some some younger looking apes smoking hookah. Oh, no, there's some teen... teen angst ridden Re- there's, a, there's a whole movie, rebellion yeah. like subculture going on in this city like we see underage drinking going on later with a handful of apes it's pretty cool pass around the schnapps bottle look like like you just imagine like what what these kids are going through just like man i hate my parents <laughs> let's go swing on that tree do you, do you think there are other cities on this planet because we only ever see the one do you think they're this is like the shitty like podunk town of this of this uh planet it could be like it's a like it's a suburb at least yeah this isn't like a well i don't know they got some heavy hitters living here they do they do have some pretty big names there um maybe it's like beverly hills or something so we're again we're in the city uh the slave cards getting pulled through this is definitely was a tim burton note uh the monkey in the box, like the man playing the Jack in the Box with a monkey. Yeah. But here's where the fun part comes in, Mally. They replaced it where now the monkey is the man with a box and uh, a little person is playing the monkey. Dude, seriously, for the money. writing on this movie just... Superb. Amazing. <laughs> little, Exquisite little things from like that. To That's end. what makes a good movie visualize your script put it there's in the everything put it all on want. screen put it all on there's screen there's callbacks to the original there's just a cornucopia <laughs> of ape puns so many puns just um, everything you could hope for my next note is uh this is by far paul giamatti's lowest point yeah we uh, made it a solid <laughs> hour into this movie before i realized I was waiting for Paul Giamatti to pop up the whole time, and it took me about an hour to realize he had been here the whole time. Not only is he playing this, just eating the scenery up like like a fat kid with cake, but, and he's not only an ape, he's a ginger ape. He's the only this one, is this he's is the only ginger ape in here, and he is like lo- he's loving the camera in this movie, he just... Just d- 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 digging deep into it, dude. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um. So, yeah. Then we're introduced to Helena Bonham Carter's character, who I just wrote down as Ape Peta. Um, I don't even know what her real name is. <laughs> okay. Going back to that BAFTA nomination. Mm-hmm. Oh, we want to talk about the wig? It's so bad. <laughs> it was like... There are... Two. She's got that like female apes. She's got that like thirty year old like. Can I speak to a man? Let me speak to your manager. Haircut. <laughs> the Hagen Dazs soccer mom haircut, as I like to yes. call it. Yes. Uh, yeah. There. I think there's two female apes in this movie, and both the wigs are terrible. 
terrible week because there's there's oh, her yeah. and then there's one we'll talk we'll talk about when we get there. Oh, we're gonna talk All about the, the other one. Mm. That's why this movie was PG thirteen. We're gonna spend a while <laughs> on that scene. Um. So yeah, she is basically the animal rights activist, except you know, play on words because we Mally are the animals in this situation. Again, just the right, they're killing it with like the subtext. This is the template for how you write your movie, like, and make it formulaic, make it hit all the beats. It's a four quadrant movie, it's for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. It's for apes, it's for humans, for for, time traveling space clouds, uh, and Pericles. That's a culture (laughs) too, guys. It's he's his own separate thing. Um, Pericles, I don't know. So, so Mark right Wahlberg now. and stuff. this blonde woman, for whoever, whatever reason, I don't even know what her name is in this movie. She, she looked Lauren? so familiar. Yeah. But she has is literally the, been in nothing. nothing. <laughs> uh, very forgettable, too, because I don't even remember her character's name. Uh, also, I Pri- couldn't tell Christine. you a single character's name yeah, in this I really movie. Can. I think Tim Ross is the only one I know. And Pericles. That's it. Uh, I don't even know Marky I- Mark's name. Um uh yeah good luck uh pristine pristine makeup in this movie for a character that is in literal rags just oh yeah plumped lips eyeliner even Hel- helena bottom carter fleek helena bottom carter's character perfect uh eyeliner it's fantastic Lightning um thick that eyeliner yeah 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 so they are sold like to, richard from lost thick. yeah helena bottom carter buys marky mark and his uh, mistress and they are put into prison basically they're house slaves uh with two other forgettable characters uh marky martin decides to make an escape after uh a a dinner party there he makes a comment here we'll, we'll go back, we'll come back to the dinner party but I, this is my next note oh yeah we have to come back to this the dinner is, party i want to talk about the dinner oh, the party dinner party's great um the, he makes a line here. The girl asks him, "What tribe is he from?" Mm. And he says, "What? What? Actually, you know, you tell me, Matt. What does he say?" His exact line is, "Okay, what tribe are you from?" Mm-hmm. United States Air Force, mm-hmm. and I'm going back. Let's talk about this for a minute. The Air Force is not <laughs> NASA. That is literally my note. <laughs> At no point, I don't think you see a NASA patch anywhere, but at no point do you see uh, a plane, <laughs> which I think is no, like a prerequisite okay, I under, for the Air Force. From my understanding, <laughs> and my entire knowledge of this is based off... A life experience? Uh, uh, if you call watching Independence Day a lot yeah. life experience, yes. Well, that's, that's just a documentary. You, you go... F- that's true. Of when Randy Quaid saved us all. Mm-hmm. You, I believe you go from the Air Force to NASA. It's a possibility. They are not one and the same. No, no, no. Um, and I feel that, again, they did not establish <laughs> me. I'm not trying to bring down the writing, guys, because mm-hmm. it's, it's just, they just nailed it all yeah, around. But if pillars. I had to nitpick, this is a bad The line. one thing I would say is that they didn't establish the world well. Maybe think... the Air Force and NASA are one and the same. Maybe in this, because this takes place in the future. Did you know that? Because they don't ever establish that. <laughs> but we'll talk about that. Well, that's just good writing. Yeah, that's yeah. just leaving stuff ambiguous. Yeah, yeah. I see what they're doing. Uh, let's talk I'm about this dinner party scene. Yes. Uh, where we're introduced, I guess we're not re- introduced for the first time, but we're really introduced to his character, uh, Tim Roth. Uh, just, Tim Roth is in a completely separate movie he than is everyone else. acting his ass he off He is in going this movie. for the Oscar gold here which could you imagine like the campaign if he was like oscar nominated for this like they show at the oscars you know like the nominees are and then they just show all the actors in their movies and it's all these dramas but then they show tim roth and full ape costume as as thade if they only showed clips of him clips of his character talking not interacting with other characters in the movie Mm -hmm. just clips of him Yep, I would probably buy into it. That's what the, the trailer should have been, just him, because that 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 would have yeah. sold it. Although I will say, he is just 
pissed off the entire he, movie. He is in a totally separate movie than the every else. line is like, I, I feel like want yeah. to kill. I feel like Paul Giamatti guy. knew. I don't know what the line is. Yeah, I feel like Paul Giamatti knew what kind of movie this was and was playing it up. Whereas Tim Roth was like, "We're gonna make this the greatest fucking thing ever." Yeah. Um. So at this dinner party, uh, Thade, that's Tim Roth's character, the senator, uh, Helena Bonham Carter, they're all just kind of having this, you know, like a high society. Let's talk about politics thing, and that's my note here. We're at a dinner party. We're talking politics in a movie about fucking apes running a planet. We still have to have this dinner party politics scene. Why? Why is this scene in this movie? Again, man, that great writing. They trick you into. You're on a it's fucking a movie planet of a. Hey, it's in the title, but we got to talk about politics. It's and we gotta talk a about world of gorillas. I believe they even talk about taxes. And they trick you into a dinner party politics. That's how good the writing in this movie was. <laughs> they, you don't even like, know what you're getting into. They're, they're kind of just putting their sub- subtle, like, own personal opinions about politics into this movie that's about apes. Okay. Also, my next There's note, a metaphor in there somewhere. My next joke, and I don't even remember the context of it. I just wrote dick jokes, question mark. Do you remember what this was about? I remember there's a lot of dig jokes in this movie, but I don't remember what the first one was about. I think it was something about, like, humans do something below their waist or something. Oh, yeah. it was it, The line's something like, the only good... Some, what was it? I don't know. It was something like... The fact that we can't the remember only, Oh, is, the only useful part of a human is below their waist. Wait, does that mean that they're fucking humans? I don't know. If it's the only useful Again, man, thing? that great ambiguous writing they were going for. Yeah, oh boy. God, just nailing it. Uh, my next note also says Tim Roth is a frat boy on steroids, basically because he's very angry and very rapey in this scene. Oh, uh, yeah. As evidenced by the scene where he's trying to put the moves on Helena Bottom Carter. But he's going anti-Cosby. He's just going straight for it. Just, you know... In her face, rubbing her hair, breathing, sniffing her, all that fun stuff that you would have. As she is do. drawing with her feet, because remember, oh, they yeah. are apes. Oh, yes. Got to re- uh, you know, reiterate that they are indeed apes, and they could do things that we as you humans just, You get do. so emotionally attached to the characters, you forget that they're apes. Yeah, that they're apes. apes. It, it's it's so incredible. humanized, yeah, by you know Paul Giamatti's acting and Helena Bonham Carter's acting that you just forget they're apes. Uh, so here, here, let's talk about it. Uh, Marky Mark makes this makes his escape, and uh, I, just cool as a cucumber, man. I, yeah, and she he takes his his damsel in distress with him, but she's like, "We can't go without my family." Why does he give a shit? He, first of all, he still hasn't even come to the realization that he's on a planet of like maybe it's denial. Maybe he's just like not having this freak out moment. But I, if I he, landed on a planet of AIDS, maybe he's just. We're not cued into this again. Not trying to trash the writing because it's brilliant. Maybe he's just in shock the entire time. Well, he is very good at, cl- at keeping. And his it calm doesn't hit him case. until the end. Uh, so yeah, he decides to make his escape, and of course, old girl says we can't go without my family. Which again, why does he give a shit? But he's running through this house, and the other female ape, <laughs> the other of the two. Is the hewer. is this a mating dance she's doing for the other ape? I don't know what the hell was going on. I wrote down scene. that this is the prototype for drop down and get your eagle on because I don't know what the hell this girl, this this female ape, is doing in this ritual like, dance. She starts out walking down the steps seductively, yeah, yeah, and, and like then just starts array. going batshit just, crazy, like twerking so hard and. It looks like she, what I wrote down was it looks like Cher is trying to mate with Job of the Hut because she's nailed it. Yeah, she looks spot on. The character looks like Cher, and the guy on the bed is just so fucking obese. Then he, uh, we go through the next uh, room in the house. It's almost like a Scooby Doo episode where we're just going through all the different rooms of the house. Uh, I wrote down rose petal baths. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. There's the the big ape. Uh, Hanging from the ceiling. And they're literally they're just... 
He's just rubbing rose petals on himself. Yeah, what? What is that? Uh, American Beauty. <laughs> Maybe he really loves Again, the. Again, I forgot how good the writing. Maybe he's this just movie really was. a big fan of I Sam Mendes. Um. Also, I didn't write this in notes, but this is where the little girl, I guess, is the daughter of one of these apes, has bought a human little girl and kept her in a cage. Um, I laughed so hard at this. Uncontrollable. Because <laughs> this little girl's got such fat little cheeks and she shoved it in this birdcage-like thing on the floor. And then the little girl ape is just, like, playing with her and is, like, so excited to have a, a human pet. It's so great. Um, yeah, to, go, to reiterate, uh, my next note about Marky Mark during the escape is that he's a scientist, right? Oh, I mean, I, yeah. Like, we're he's introduced tra- to him as training, a scientist. He's training monkeys for deep space exploration. So he's, he's not a, a scientist. scientist. I mean, you wouldn't think so, I but guess all then that again, Air Force training? He's, wait, so he's a scientist in the Air he, Force. He's pretty damn good at doing soldier with shit. monkeys. Yeah, I guess. That makes sense, right? Our future is fucked up. <laughs> um,. So they're making their escape, and of course they get caught. This is where we see the underage drinking going on. That's fun. Uh, yeah, yeah. Chris Christopherson, uh, poor man Jeffrey, just decides he's gonna attack Michael Clark Duncan. But my, I read what, what what was his plan? He picks up this like torch and is running full speed towards Michael Clark Duncan, who just kind of just knocks him over. Yeah. What was his plan? <laughs> I, it wasn't even like a self sacrifice. They were already ahead of them, running away before he. Yeah, stopped. they were. They were good. Like, yeah, they were great. Thir- and Michael Clark Duncan, there's like thirty apes standing there. Yeah, only one that notices. Yep. Like all the other apes see Michael Clark Duncan walk past them, and they they nope, they're just stern, yep. staring on at a wall. So so uh, yeah. Uh, Peter Ape and or Ape Peter. I, I think I like that. That sounds better. Ape Peter, Marky Mark, his his, his his girl. Yep. Uh, Ape Peter's servant uh, and some other forgettable characters all decide they're gonna escape. Uh, I'm gonna skip through this part because it's boring as hell. They find this ship. Uh, they find two dead apes that Tim Ross character killed about his after they discovered his uh, Marky Mark spaceship had crashed there. Uh, they decide they're going to go to some place called whatever forbidden. It's some typical bullshit. I don't know. Um, but they come across this camp, uh, where some apes are camped out. Uh, Tim Ross character has ordered that they find Marky Mark and his crew and the funky bunch. Um, and they decide, you know, rather than go around this camp to get to the forbidden zone or whatever the fuck it's called, they're going to go through the camp on horsebacks, which again, I don't know where the fuck these horses came from. But they successfully go through it, and on the other side of the camp is a is like a big river, right? And they, you know, apparently this is where we're introduced where apes are afraid we just of water. Skipped over like forty five minutes, but of it's the movie. so it's so forgettable, dude. Oh no, no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, the trailer happens. White knuckle throw ride. Yep. The movie boring, boring to as tears. hell. <laughs> There's forty five minutes of them wandering through the woods. Yep, through the desert and the woods. Yep. So, anyways, uh, they they're gonna cross this this river, and this is where we introduce the the notion that apes are afraid of water. I did look this up, and this is what I found. I found that gorillas cannot swim naturally, and therefore they do avoid large bodies of waters and rivers. But that just doesn't seem right to me. I feel like I constantly see apes like I feel okay bathing this, in rivers if, on the Nature we, Channel. If this was like a Planet of the Cats movie, yeah, I feel like the big you know hinging a quite large plot This is point. where the movie is too smart for the audience that's there to see the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Cause you know, yep. You, God, you, again, that great writing, goddamn. But yeah, they make it through the water. Uh, the camp goes around the water to find them. Whatever. It doesn't matter. It's so fucking boring. Um, and they find uh, the space station that Marky Mark was on at the beginning of the movie, has crashed there, and is old and decrepit. And, yeah, apparently it's been there for thousands of years. So this is where he finds out that he's time-traveled, okay? Cut to uh, a great cameo that was so great, I didn't even know about it until I looked it up. Tim Ross' character is 
bedside with his dying father, played by Charlton Heston. Yes, as Tim Roth's father. This was a point of contention, actually, that uh, we'll talk about in the trivia section of the movie. He must have been going senile at that yeah. point. Um, so, Charlton Heston's character apparently has this artifact. And what is this artifact? It's a space gun. Of course it is. Because we haven't seen a single gun in this movie, and that's what all that the original movies were, were, you know, gun battles and chasing and everything. So, uh, Tim Roth takes this I gun. I think you see the space gun once before this, don't you? Yeah, in the scene right before this, uh, Marky Mark finds his, his space gun in his old ship, and it gets fucking destroyed by one of the apes. He just picks it up and throws it against a rock and breaks it. Which, again, why is it Marky Mark pissed? I just, you literally have your only weapon ripped out of your hands by an ape and thrown against a rock. The ape that's on your side. And you're just like, why would you do that? His reaction to literally everything <laughs> that happened is, I gotta get back. He's, I, I don't understand. I'm like, on this planet you're on of a apes. planet of apes. I gotta get back. <laughs> I destroyed I say, your gun. I gotta get back. Can I say I'm not good with impressions, but I feel like I'd nail Marky Mark. It's the easiest impression to do. You just have to have a, a, a upswing in your inflection. That's true. And you get that, just a little bit of a Boston accent. It's perfect. <laughs> I'm on a planet of apes. <laughs> How you doing? You doing good? You doing good, apes? Anyways. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> my next, uh, oh yeah, Charter Heston has his bullshit, uh, can't revise his revision, his, whatever you want to call it. He says, damn them all to hell again as he dies. Good. Like, whatever. You already did the callback line. Yeah, that was Tim. That was the Tim Burton did note. I think you have to do it again. I feel like that one was definitely Tim Burton. Like we got to do it. It's a pivotal scene. In the again, movie. I'm strive. I'm like I'm trying hard to nitpick because yeah. I mean the script is just. I mean it's airtight, really. Mm-hmm. Um. So guys, guess what? The ship still works. That was <laughs> no. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you really gonna nitpick at the science of this movie? After all we've sat through, I believe I can, like I'm an on board. Half of this, I am on board with with fucking monkeys in space suits. Mm-hmm. I'm on board with time traveling space clouds. Mm-hmm. I'm on board with planets of apes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm guns. on board with I don't know all the other shit. But you draw the line at I draw the line computers. at this thousand like this ship <laughs> crashed. Mm-hmm. It didn't land. It crashed mm-hmm. thousands of years ago, mm-hmm. and it starts right up. It's good to go. Yep. Good to go. Um, I also wrote down a note here. Uh, Moses? Question mark. The reason I wrote that down is because, first of all, uh, Diet Dude Jeff Bridges looks like Moses. and uh, But he doesn't do anything. Else. But yeah, it's almost like... Um, it's, he's a red herring, man. Ooh, They're that's tricking a good point. You. Mark Again, Mark. That gr- that's to get you in the theater. writing, man. Just... Marky Mark, I feel like, is... The, not your typical Christ symbolism. I feel like he's more of Moses, like leading, because he's leading these people, these other humans come out of the woodwork when they show up at this ship, and he's telling them, you know, you've got to flee. The this army of apes is coming. Very Lord of the Rings. Actually, now that you think about it, what Moses led them? He parted the sea. He led. And guess what? Marky Mark walks through the fucking river with the apes on his back. Moses led him through the desert for 40 days yep. and 40 nights. Bam. Marky Mark led us through it, the woods deep, for guys. 40 minutes of the movie. Guys, this is deep. Deep cuts here. Anyways. I'm going to have to rewatch this movie. This is <laughs> No, you're not. Yeah, you're um, right. So, yeah, he, he they're basically... They're kind of building up like a Helm's Deep battle is about to happen. Um, oh, man. I don't even have anything... To talk about with the climax of the movie. Oh, I do. Go ahead, because I, I didn't write anything down. Great call. <laughs> I literally went from this part to after the climax. Great callback to the super ape jumps of the beginning. Mm-hmm. Showdown. Michael Clark Duncan. Oh, yeah. Some other ape. Shang that's a good guy. from Mortal Kombat. Oh, my God. That's who he played? I had to look it up. I had no idea until I looked it up, but yes. Okay. That is carry above uh, They approach whatever one another. They yep. throw their weapons down. They're doing this mono y mono. Oh, and they gotta collide in midair. Yeah. I was getting there. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I, 
I'm sorry. They super. Well, you've ruined it now. They, they super, super jump. space. They super space jump into mid air into each other, and then literally the fight's over. So it's like it's in like two uh, seconds. Agent Smith and Neo colliding mid air. Yeah, kind of, yeah. but you know, hairier. Yep. They jump, collide mid air, land on the ground. You think it's the beginning of an epic battle? It's no, over. Michael Huck Duncan punches beats the Shang Tsung like once, <laughs> and he's dead. I mean. This is an okay climax, right? This is an okay battle scene. I thought it was going to be amazing until that. It was all right. Um, so yeah, I don't even care about the fight scene. Let's let's. I want to get through the end of this movie as quick as possible. I mean, that's pretty much the entire fight <laughs> um, scene. I can't tell you anything else that happens. So the best part, though, of this like epic battle between Marky Mark and Tim Roth is just when Tim Roth is in the space station. He's got oh, his gun. We skipped something. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. That's my next note here. Uh, guess who shows up to stop the middle of the battle? Yeah, dude. Mother I don't remember his name. fucking Pericles. Yeah. Shows up in the best possible way. His ship comes down. Everyone starts fighting. The ship lands. The you know the hissing airlock releases. Flips up. And they're, and a, they're building up the moment. They're like, just who, building who can it up. Be? Like, oh who can it God, be? In this slow it? dolly in. And immediately just a flip up of a visor and a and thumbs it's this up. Sh- <laughs> stupid little monkey it's with the just greatest, the biggest like, shit eating grin on his it's face. It's the biggest like slow dolly push in, like swelling music to just flip up the visor and a thumbs up. <laughs> I literally wrote down thumbs up. Um, oh, this is where we find out that Paul Giamatti is going to become a, uh, a drug dealer because. Uh, Marky Mark takes Pericles by the hand, takes his bag, his, his ba- basically his backpack, and throws it to Paul Giamatti, who starts selling aspirin. He literally, the line is literally, who wants aspirin? As a bunch of people crowd around to buy from him. I mean... How does they know, even know what aspirin is? They don't even have electricity in this world. How do they have pharmaceutical drugs? I you can't no, answer I it. I, I'm I not, it's nothing. rhetorical. I yeah. Got um. Best part of this of this ending, though, oh, of this uh, third act climax, is uh, Tim Ross got this gun and he's aiming it at Marky Mark. He's already beat Pericles. Uh, Marky Mark's got his hands up. He's surrendering, and we get this this close up of this basically this handprint sensor keypad, right? Which still. Fucking works. Yep, still works. Um, Not letting that basically, go. what it does is it closes the bridge, I guess, of the ship off with like yeah. bulletproof glass. The best part is, you know, hey, hey laser proof glass. First I'm off. sorry. We get a close up of Marky Mark. We get a close up of the keypad. Close up of Marky Mark. Close up of the keypad. And it's building this tension, like he's gonna make his move. Is he's gonna be so great? And it's just a slow. He just kind of just reaches over. <laughs> it's so anticlimactic. Just just touches it real quick and. Yeah. The, of course, the glass drops down. Tim Roth loses his shit and hides. And basically, he's just captured, right? Yeah. All right. So, whatever. There's an awkward ape kiss. Stupid. There's an okay. Awkward... <laughs> Can we talk about Marky Mark just running game in this movie? And not even on two separate women, two separate species. Before he... So, he's leaving because, again, his entire response to anything that happens in the movie... I got to get back. I gotta get back on this Before ship. he decides, he's gonna get back. But first... I'm not doing too good. He's gotta make out with mom wig having... Eight Peter. Eight Peter. And then walks over to the Forgettable blonde... Forgettable blonde, yeah. Y- yeah. Who just saw them make out? Makes out with her. <laughs> Unwarranted. Gets, gets in his ship and just... Pimps away. Fucks the fuck off this planet. That is the, literally the most baller move of all time. Yep. So, at this point, everyone who signed up for this movie signed up for one reason. That twist ending of the original. How are they going to build up? How are they going to live up to that amazing twist ending of the original movie? Well, first off, he flies off the planet. Mm Mm-hmm. Luckily... The time traveling space cloud is just still there. Oh wait, 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 wait! I'm getting there. I'm getting there. But let me say this: we got to build up to the amazingness of this original movie, right? This this twist ending has got okay. to pay off. Uh, 
And then you look at the at the the time code. You realize you only got five minutes left, if that. Not even like <laughs> like a solid three and a half top. I'm saying like I'm saying two All max. Right. And of course, this super convenient time traveling cloud just like, happens to be that stayed there just for orbiting how many the planet. Of years. Um, Marky Mark punches through it, and when you know it, we're going backwards in time instead of forward. I don't know how like they literally change it he, up. he exits the time travel cloud. He's by like Saturn, and literally decades worth of space travel in like in, four seconds. Yeah, four seconds. <laughs> like you can see Saturn, <laughs> and then it cuts to his monitor. It says Earth. approaching Earth's orbit. Yep. And but again, this is like the epitome of the "we gotta wrap this up" ending. Oh, this was that this was one of my last the most notes. tacked on ending. It was so quick. All right, so anyways, let's we gotta talk about it. I know this is the whole point of the podcast, the podcast. That ending. All right, <sighs> so he enters our atmosphere, where apparently in Washington D.C. we see the Washington Monument. He crashes in the uh, what is it called? That pool that's right yeah, there. Okay, if he's for it. he literally mentions a few times like, "Oh man, I'm Air Force." Mm-hmm shittiest navigator on the face of the planet. Oh, yeah. You couldn't definitely. land on, like, I don't know, a runway? Yep. Nope. Got to crash right into the pool there in front of the Washington Monument, up on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. And this is it's so quick. There's no, like, moment to breathe of, oh, God, I just landed. Thank God I'm safe. I'm back on Earth. Nope. He just, he just pops up in the door. It literally runs, runs up the steps. To the t- <laughs> it's like Rocky just running the top of the steps. And, of course, who's there? What do we see? We see... The Lincoln Memorial, uh-huh. but instead of Lincoln... Oh? Who is it? It's Ape Lincoln. Oh, snap! It's not only Ape Lincoln, it's Thade they- Ape Lincoln. Tim Roth! Oh, that's his name. Yep. And then, of course, we got some Ape Police that show Again, up. Again, that would carry so much more weight if I could have remembered a character's name throughout this entire movie. But let's talk about this ending, okay? Well, there's a lot to talk about in the trivia section, but just re- real quick... So we're, we're led to believe that basically Earth's history has kind of pretty much remained the same in terms of technology, in terms of, you know, historical events such as, like, the Civil War or whatever. Yeah, I don't... But we have Ape Lincoln, right? Who did Ape Lincoln free? A- a- I don't... Because if it's illegal to be a human, which is all we can assume, because they immediately arrest Mark Wahlberg... Who did he free? I'm assuming the horses. Free, I'm assuming. Oh, that's all I've got. That could be like a whole other franchise. But the, but the inscription above the ape memorial, the Lincoln Memorial, says that all apes are created equal. So it's got to be they enslaved other apes. Like gorillas, Chips? like we're like gorillas enslaving baboons. I don't know. I don't oh, know. it was bad. You know, it was baboons. It was fucking smelly ass baboons. Their butts are two different colors. It's weird. And that's it. That's the end of the movie. Just fade to black. No explanation. And again, just to reiterate, everything from the moment he takes (laughs) off to the moment he gets arrested by the ape cops, Mm -hmm. literally two minutes. No time at all to breathe. Just happens. We gotta we gotta meet this runtime. We gotta get there. We can't go any over or it's gonna cost us. And that's it. That's the end of the movie. I can't agree. I mean, I, I can agree with that completely because I mean a, they were already a good four and a half hours into this movie. Oh yeah, or this at least movie that's is what long. it felt like. This movie is so it it does. I don't even know what the runtime is, but I'm betting two hours at least. It feels so. Uh, long. It was and between like one forty five and two hours. Nothing happens in this movie. Literally nothing happens. It's so boring until, until that climax. About an hour and a half. In. Yeah, until that climax. Anyway, that's the movie. Whatever. Let's. Uh, let's we're all now dumber for having. Let's talk about some trivia. I've stopped trying to defend the movie. <laughs> Let's talk about some trivia before we give our silver lining, okay? Oh, this first one pisses me off. Uh, yeah, I think everyone kind of knows this, but holy shit, is it a big one? Okay. Uh, in order to star in the film, Tim Roth turned down the role of Professor Severus Snape in the Harry Potter franchise. Which I will say there are two silver linings to that one. We got one, Alan Rickman. We got Alan Rickman. May Can't top that. Mm-hmm. And we got Tim Roth acting his ass off in this movie. So, and you know what? Worth it. 
Totally worth it. Completely. Good call, Tim Roth. Yep. Way to go, buddy. Uh, Mark Wahlberg decided to join the movie, uh, join the film, after meeting with Tim Burton for only five minutes. Says he was so anxious to work with the director, he agreed to play any part. Uh, Wahlberg, this is his, his fuck up. Wahlberg dropped out of the role of Linus in Ocean's Eleven that later went to Matt Damon in order to do this film. What? Yeah. Stupid. He refused to wear a loincloth like Charlton Heston did in the original Planet of the Apes because he didn't want anyone to be reminded of his underwear modeling ads. None of us really wanted to No be one wanted to see you in a loincloth. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Uh, tough break, dude. Ocean's Eleven would have been a much better decision yeah. for you. Great movie. Yeah. Uh, you want to talk about some people that were uh, considered to play the lead role? Sure. Okay, so I'm going to start with the reverse order here. Okay. Patrick Swayze. Oh, my God. I can kind of see the Charlton Heston resemblance. I can see it. I can see it. Kevin Costner. Mm, it's a little strange. And there's the big one. I'm just going to throw it out there. Harrison Ford. I would watch that movie in that heartbeat. Would, that would be... But I feel like he would have to be the Charlton Heston again. Mm-hmm. He's still got to do the Planet damn Dirty the, Apes line. Planet of the damn Apes. How, how great would this movie have been with Harrison Ford instead? It would have been incredible. You want to know something really cool? Guess who was considered to direct this movie? Tim Burton. Oh, wait, he did direct yeah. it. Yeah. Robert Rodriguez. How sick I would, would that have been? I would watch the hell out of that. Wait. Directed by Robert Rodriguez, starring Planet Harrison Ford? Ooh. I just imagine, like... That's literally printing money. You remember the, uh... Well, pr- printing my money. Yeah, you remember the, the trailers money. for, like, Grindhouse? Like, that sick voiceover? I imagine that with this, like, Robert Rodriguez is Planet of the Apes. I would love to see, like, a hard R. Yes. Uh, but he was only considered to direct because they wanted to bring the budget down. Well, I mean, if, if it would have worked, whatever. Um, so this film, we talked about this a minute, but this film takes place in the year 2029 and he apparently time travels to the year 5021. So three, about 3000 years. Wait, when he time when he goes to the planet or when he comes back to Yeah, when Earth? we start him off at the movie, the very beginning, we're in the year 2029. So that's that's not for what that's that's, that's pretty optimistic. Yeah, that's thirteen. Yeah, that's pretty years optimistic that NASA is still <laughs> going strong. Then, um, well, I mean, they're gonna. Well, they do eventually. Yeah, become absorbed into the United States Air, Air Force, Force, of course. So. Uh, and mm-hmm. of course, yeah, the, budget all the there. stuff that takes place on the Planet of the Apes is in the year fifty twenty one. So three th- about three thousand. Wait, years. is it right that it takes place on? Is that date right? That's what it says. The starting date is February 14th, so Valentine's Day. Oh, he day. loses his monkey on Valentine's yeah, Day? Yeah, that was his only date. That's why he went after oh, him. Oh, man, this is a dead I gotta movie. get my monkey. I want that monkey ass. Um, Tim Burton said that he'd rather jump what? out of a window than direct a sequel to this film. Well, good on you, Tim Burton. I would rather jump out of a window Actually, than you know see a sequel to this film. I was like, you know what? I take that back. I kind of would like to see a sequel to this. Like, keep the same actors and just do, like, start to pick it up right where the last one left off. And let it be like a rival series to the new prequels we got going on. I don't want a crossover. I want like a X Men versus mutants kind of thing going okay. on. Okay, that'd be nice, right? Get some uh, competition is always good. Uh, so guess who was up for the role of Thade that eventually I went to see. Tim Roth? One and of one them. of these I really want to see. So Johnny Depp was considered. That's not anything special. Johnny Depp does every Tim Burton thing apparently. Yeah, but this one's kind of big. I want to uh, see this movie. Oh my! Mm. Daniel Day Lewis. I want it, I want him in the version that's being directed by Robert Rodriguez with Harrison Ford, Ford in the Marky yep. Mark role. Yep. About it. Totally about they it. They had a perfect movie at one point in here somewhere. And they fucked it up. All right. So, Planet of the Apes, right? Starring Planet of the Apes, Harrison Ford, starring Harrison Ford and Daniel Day Lewis, and Daniel Day Lewis, directed by Robert Rodriguez, and Leonardo DiCaprio oh, is. Wait, oh, what? Wait, what was in Machete in Space? In Hard R. I don't remember what the what his character was. The Machete in Space. Uh, it was like character subject to change or whatever it said. Uh. <laughs> um, let's talk about the ending. Tim Burton himself has said uh, the ending was not supposed to make any sense, which that's bullshit. That's what directors say when they Wait, just, just to clarify, tack on an he's ending. talking about how Marky Mark made out with two women, right? Right. Yep. Okay. Uh, he said it was supposed to be more of a cliffhanger that would eventually be explained in a possible sequel. Yeah, like which one does he end up with? Here's the thing: 
You do not make a movie setting up a sequel that doesn't warrant a sequel. <laughs> you have to make each movie its own separate thing that is worthy enough to stand on its own. That's why Avengers 2 was bullshit because it was a placeholder movie to fill in the gaps between Avengers 1 and Infinity Wars or and yeah. again, or Civil War, I guess. You have to make each movie in your franchise its own worthy movie. That's why Nolan's trilogy works. They're all their yeah, own separate all movies, movies that are good movies. He said it was it was a reasonable cliffhanger that could be used in case Fox or any other filmmaker wanted to do another movie. Yeah, he's not even saying like he's not even he saying set he, up a sequel yeah, for, himself. for him to follow up no, on. Just, he's yeah, like, oh, I it. figured someone else would want to make another movie about yep. it. So, yep. Fuck but, you, Tim but you know Burton. what? He says it doesn't make any sense. He himself has said the movie the ending doesn't make sense. Oh, well, but, that's reassuring. But his girlfriend, or at least at this time, girlfriend. Helena Bonham Carter said, uh, "I think they're divorced now. They are now. Well, they never, they never were never married. They just broke up after like a decade. Whatever." Uh, she said, "I thought the ending made sense. Uh, I don't understand why everyone went, huh? It's all a time warp thing. Wait, He's hey, gone back." You, hang on, you paraphrase. She said, "I thought it made sense, kind of." My mistake. I'm sorry. I left out the kind of. She says she didn't. That is key. <laughs> she says she didn't understand why everyone was confused. Said it's all a time warp thing. He's gonna be back, and he realizes that Thade's beating him there. That's kind of what I got out of it, but it still doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, Air tie writing. Yep. One of the possible endings that was considered for the movie was that Marky Mark's character, who's apparently named Leo Davidson, didn't get that at all. Uh, was gonna crash land. Did they land. say his name once in the movie? I don't know. This would have been a better ending to me. He was supposed to crash land. At Yankee Stadium and seeing a bunch of A's playing baseball. I would love to see that. Yeah. Would, Who doesn't yeah. want to see A's no, play I would baseball? Say, I would, yeah. All right, we got two more. Tim Roth uh, said that despite multiple viewings, he was confused by the film's ending. He said, I cannot explain that ending. I've seen it twice and I don't understand anything. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Okay, this is my theory. I don't understand anything. This is my theory regarding Tim Roth. Uh huh. Tim Roth got this like he got us. He got two scripts. Yep. One for this movie. Mm -hmm. Another for like a real, you know, dig deep kind of heartfelt, emotionally driven drama piece. Yep. He read that one was like, oh man, I'm in. Mm -hmm. But when it came time to shoot, he showed up With on the wrong, the wrong set. Yep. I believe and it. And just went along with it. <laughs> I because the it. performance he gives outstanding amazing yep so so i understand why he doesn't he he's he's talking about a completely different movie oh yeah he was definitely. confused as hell so the last thing we want to talk about here is uh apparently this movie had been in several different developmental stages since 1988 oh yeah they tried they to wanted to this reboot movie this movie a, a lot. long time so here's some of the directors that were involved in actual pre-production, like this movie was greenlit and going. Uh, these are some of the directors that were uh, involved with the pre-production. Alan okay. Rifkin. Okay. Sam Raimi. Ooh, I'd watch that. That would be pretty cool. I'd watch that. Philip Noyce. Chuck Russell. Christopher Columbus, which he did Wait. Harry Potter, so I mean. Oh, I thought you were about to talk about the dude with the. No. Flat, whatever. Anyway. Roland Emmerich, which. <laughs> that, yeah. What, what the you planet was blown up at the end. Yeah. Michael Bay. Fuck yeah, I'd watch. Oh my god, bring back Will Smith, and Martin Lawrence. Let's do this. Bad Boys. I'm playing. I would have been down with that. Crossover. Peter Jackson, which yeah, everyone expects that. Yeah, of course. Albert and Alan Hughes. Huh. Interesting. Uh, in 1993, Oliver Stone, who was initially considered to direct the film, that uh, weird. signed on as an EP. That's executive producer for those of you not in the business. Uh, and he wanted Terry Hayes to rewrite the script with get this. Arnold Schwarzenegger in the lead role. I'm in. Yep. It'd be, I mean, it, like a Predator type movie. Dude, yeah. I'd watch that. Predator versus Planet of the Apes. I can, man, just infinite crossover. That's pretty sick, dude. Uh, James Cameron had signed on to be an EP and wanted to help write the film, but he dropped out to do, uh, you know, ty uh, after he did Titanic. <laughs> he was like, I'm too good for He's this. He's like, yeah, I don't need to do this anymore. Yeah. Don't blame him. I'm going to go make a Good movie on you, about Cameron. blue aliens. Yeah, for real. Yeah, well, we all can't be winners. 
So that's it. That's all we've got to say about the film itself. So here's where we come to the whole point of this podcast. We th- this ending is so not only bleak, it's just bullshit. Uh, nobody learns anything in this movie. There's no like character we, arc. <laughs> we're pulling hard to find. Yeah, the we on this one, we guys. sat down for a good solid five to ten minutes before we recorded this. We're like, what is the silver lining of this movie? Uh, I know five to ten minutes doesn't seem like a long time, but, but it really when you're does. Just when you're sitting, sitting in just silence, thinking, yeah. thinking it's forever. So, Mally, you went a little more like full spectrum on what your silver lining is. Yes. Do you want to tell me what you got? The one is... good thing you can get out of this movie mm-hmm. is that the production studios realized they, <laughs> after only one film, they realized that they needed to reboot the franchise again. Again. <laughs> For a second time. And we got Rise and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, which and now we're getting have war. been super solid. Yeah, yeah solid war, war is coming out soon, and I couldn't be more So psyched. good. Uh, so I kind of, I was racking my brain over how the movie itself has a silver lining, the story. What is the story silver lining at the end of the day? And it took me forever, but this is all I could come up with. And the reason I say that as a precursor is not every episode can each movie have a true definitive silver lining. It can't always be, you know. We'll try to find them, we're but gonna we try. can't guarantee they're there. So here's what I came up with. That time traveling cloud is pretty convenient. <laughs> okay? <laughs> he went forward once in time and then came right back out the other side. Maybe he could use it again. He knows how to stop Thade, you know? Or at least... He knows how Thade works. But he dude, can go right back he, to that cloud. What if he ends up in like a butterfly effect situation? He just keeps Ooh, messing with time. That's a movie we got to do eventually, too. That's got a bleak ending. Yeah, you're right. If we talk about the director's cut anyway. Aww. Anyway, that's all I got, man. I know it's not a winner, but all I can say is he done it twice already. He can use that, that time traveling cloud. Again. We tried this week to kind yeah. of pep it up a little bit <laughs> since we did such a dark movie last week. Yeah. And I think I'm more depressed now. Yeah. In so, myself, m- But, m- m- you know mostly. what? Where there is a bleak ending, there's always the alternative. So, what is your recommendation as a pick-me-up alternative that people can watch after they see Planet of the Apes and its bleak ending to bring them right back around on the positive side? What do you got? My feel-good pick? I'm going to go with... 1996's Dunstan Checks In starring Jason Alexander. Ooh, another movie about apes. Yes. Or a I'm temp. keeping with the theme. Yep, yep. Exquisite film. That's a fun Jason film. Alexander. Who doesn't want to see a little chimp? He was still chip. on Seinfeld at the time, I yeah, believe. Yeah, who, who doesn't want to see a chimp running around a hotel? Right. Yeah, that's a fun movie. Uh, I'm going to stick, not necessarily with the theme. I, I tried to, and I couldn't think of a fun pick-me-up monkey movie. But I did go... Another Tim Burton movie that's got a fun, that's really fun and has a a, a pretty uplifting ending. <laughs> Batman Returns. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's about penguins, so there's at least the animal and cats. So there's the the animal theme that we got going on, but we're still a planet run run by humans. In this case, by the Batman, and it's another Tim Burton film, so you wait, still wait. get to see his body of work. Shut up! Don't think about it. Wait. It's a good pick me up movie. It's no. a fun movie. Wait. Um, that's got fun action. It's by the no, same director. A, wait. And that's what we got. So, guys, um, thank you for listening. Wait, Please on. subscribe no, what? and rate our podcast I'm if you s- enjoy our show. Wait. Please like us on Facebook if you haven't what? already. And uh, just How tune can... in every Monday a... and you'll get a brand new episode from us. It's... Mally, you got anything else you want to say before we wrap this up? Just... All right. So, yeah, again, please subscribe on iTunes. You'll get uh, your episodes immediately available to you the second they go out. Uh, please leave a rating. Like us on Facebook. Even If you have a movie that has a dark ending that you really like that you think we should talk about, let us know. We'll try and find a silver lining uh, if, if one can be found. So, Mally, do you have anything else you want to say before we wrap up? Um, no. All right. Well... I have one last thing that I would like to say uh, to wrap up this episode. Do you want to join me on that? Yeah. All right. Thank you for listening, everybody. Tune in next week. And as always, Excelsior. Excelsior.